Welcome to the Dundas BI How-To Video for Dashboards. This video will provide a short overview of what dashboards are and a demonstration of how to create them in Dundas BI's Dashboard Designer. Dashboards commonly exhibit the following properties. They are easy to read. They provide information at a glance. They are often a single page, which means no scrolling is required. They show information in a graphical manner. They provide context, such as historical trends or goals, and they should enable quick and informed decisions. More examples of dashboards can be found at www.dundas.com. Here, we've got the Dundas BI home screen, which is shown after logging on. To start, I'll click on New Dashboard and select the blank template. This brings up the Dashboard Designer, which is a freeform canvas where you can drag and drop data and interactive control. At the top of the designer, you'll see the toolbar. This provides easy access to most of the functionality that you'll need to effectively use the designer. On the right, we have the Explore tool window, which shows you, among other things, what data is available. Also on the right, there are the Layers and Properties tool windows, which provide more advanced functionality that we don't need right now. At the bottom, there are two additional tool windows. Parameters are for more advanced functionality, described in another video, but we'll look at data preview later in this video. Finally, it's important to note that Dundas BI automatically saves changes to the dashboard as you go, so there's no save button that you need to remember to press. Using the status bar at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to give the dashboard a different name from the default Dashboard 1. For this video, we're going to put data from several different data sources together on a single dashboard. I'm going to act as a data analyst who knows my way around the data that I'm going to be working with. From the AdventureWorks SQL database, I'm going to show the total sales by territory. From the AdventureWorks OLAP database, I'm going to show the gross profit margin for internet sales also by territory. And finally, from an Excel file located on my PC, I'm going to show my predicted sales by territory as well. Back in the Dashboard Designer, I'm going to expand my Data Connectors folder in the Explore tool window. You'll see that connections to some of my data sources have already been created for me. I'll expand my AdventureWorks SQL Data Connector and find the Sales Order Header table. Here, I see the Total Due column, which contains the total amount sold for each of my orders. Dragging and dropping the column gives me the value in a table. Because I haven't added any restrictions or groupings on the data, it simply shows me the sum of all sales. We wanted to show the total sales by territory, and I know I have a territory ID column in my table as well, so let's drag that in and drop it on the table. Okay, that's better, but definitely not what we want. Here we're seeing territory IDs, but we want to see territory names. Using the data binding panel, I'm going to remove the territory ID grouping. So we go back to just the raw total. I know that the territory information is in the source data as well. And here it is in the sales territory table. Let's expand this and drag the name column from there onto the table of the canvas. Just like that, I've got territory names just like I wanted. What happened here is that behind the scenes, Dundas BI automatically discovered the relationships between the various tables in my database and it found the one that relates records in the sales order header table with those in the sales territory table. This is very powerful. The last thing I'm going to do with my SQL data is change how it looks. By default, any data dragged in directly from a data source shows up as a table. By using the revisualize command from the context menu, I'll change it to a bar chart. Now for the second set of data. I want to show my internet gross profit margin, also broken out by sales territory. Back in the Explore tool window, this time I'll expand my AdventureWorks OLAP data connector and find the measure. OK, we've got the overall gross profit margin. Now, let's find the sales territory dimension and drag that in as well. Just like that, I've got my data exactly the way I want it. Finally, I want some data that I created myself to show up on this dashboard. I've made some predictions about what the sales were going to be, and I want to see them here as well. Believe it or not, all I need to do to bring this onto my dashboard is drag and drop. 
Here, I've got the Excel file shown in an Explorer window, and I just drag and drop it onto the browser. Revisualizes a bar chart, and now all the data is in place. The last thing we need to do is add some labels for the charts, since it's not obvious what the data is all about. From components in the toolbar, I'll add a couple of those labels. Now I'll just mention a couple of other things that come in handy when creating dashboards in Dundas BI. First, it's important to know that this entire time we've been in what's called edit mode for the dashboard. This means that when I click on something, it selects that thing and I get to do things like resize it, move it around, or delete it. View mode, on the other hand, shows the dashboard in such a way that I'm interacting more with the data itself. I can scroll through the tables, add notes, filter, and perform sorting, for example. Back in edit mode, we've got the data preview tool window, which was mentioned earlier. This window lets me see the underlying data which is shown for a particular visualization on the dashboard. For tables, this isn't very necessary since I can already see the numbers, but for charts, it can be very useful if the visualization isn't precise enough for me. If I would like to customize the visual properties or styling of anything on the dashboard, the place to go is the Properties tool window on the right-hand side of the screen. This tool window exposes all the visual properties for the selected control, or in the case where nothing is selected, for the dashboard. For example, let's say I wanted to change the background color of the dashboard. From the Properties window, I click on the Look category and I can make my selection. Similarly, I can change text and text format for a label. Here, I'll make the text bold and increase the font size. The Properties tool window allows me to control the presentation of my data. There's one last item which allows me to control the preparation of my data. In contrast to data presentation, data preparation means organizing the data in such a way that it will show the right hierarchy on the axis grouped at the right level and with the right measure or measures. Data preparation is controlled via the data binding panel, which I briefly used earlier in this video. Let me open the data binding panel for this table, showing internet gross profit margin. Here, we can see which measures are shown, which hierarchies are split across the rows, and some other things I'm not using now, such as slicers, which are used for data filtering, and column hierarchies. If I wanted to add another measure to my table, this is the place to do it. Here, I've added internet sales amount, Similarly, I can use the little X buttons to remove any measure that I don't want to see anymore. Let's say instead of just viewing the data by sales territory, I also wanted to further split it up by sales reason. I can just drag the sales reason dimension as a row hierarchy, and now I've got the second level grouping. There are many more advanced features which can be controlled using the data binding panel, but this should give you a good start in using it to prepare your data on the dashboard. Thanks for watching the Creating and Viewing Dashboards video, part of the Dundas BI tutorial series. For more videos and articles in the series, please visit www.dundas.com support.